Welcome to Echoes of Enlightenment, where we talk about spirituality, life lessons, and overall self-development. In today's episode, we'll be discussing our spiritual team, aka our guardian angels. So right now, it's about, well, it's 3.47 a.m. I was asleep, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes ago, and I just woke up out the blue. And the first thing that was popped into my mind while I was just laying there was, how would I explain to somebody what a guardian angel or your spirit team looks like if I was asked that question. So I'm I'm just laying there like going over it thinking like how do you, how do you even explain that? Knowing that I know that they're there. So what I thought about was it's a they're a present. A presence. It's a presence you feel. That's how we'll be able to explain it. And most people would think your guardian angels, when you think of them, you know, you think of like past, you know, family members, you know, ancestors, you know, friends, people that's passed on that's watching you. And maybe people that just support you that you don't even know. And I was thinking the reason why we kind of when we think about guardian angels and we picture them sometimes we picture them as how we look as just a you know just a human in human form. And that's understandable. It's understandable because When you try to imagine something that's invisible, your mind is automatically going to revert to the last thing you actually saw or the last thing that you remember them being. So, yeah, and, and I think it doesn't really even matter if you Imagine your guardian angels in a human form or even imagine whoever you want to be helping you when your guardian angels do help you in the physical. Because when they help you in the physical, it's through objects, objects. Like synchronicities, like things out in the in the world, and it, and they also help you through, like your intuition. They're the ones that give you that nudge, the nudge to you know do this or do that. Sometimes you think it's just you. You don't even know. You're like, I don't even know why I went this way. The reason why you went that certain way was because your guardian angels gave you. That direction. They pointed you in the right direction. You didn't know. And one thing I realize is. Every single one of us. We all have guardian angels. We all have them. Everybody. But. Some of us are. More in tune with their guardian angels. Because we we have to be. It depends on kind of our job that we have here on earth. What we're here, like our purpose, what we have to accomplish. 
and some you know some people's purpose on earth is not as I don't want to say not as important but might not be as you might not have to rely on your guardian angels as much they might you know have an easier role in your life almost to just you know nudge you here and there without actually having to make their presence known but I think like in in my case the reason why my guardian angels well God had to make my guardian angels present to make sure I knew that they were there is because I I had to deal with a, a narcissist and a narcissist is a dark spirit. And there was no way that I could have won that battle without knowing my guardian angels because I had to rely on them to to fight, help me fight the battle. So God pretty much had to blatantly shake me out of the matrix kind of shake me awake so I could get ready to fight this battle because I already knew you know I, you know I had guardian angels but when you think you you know you have guardian angels you're like on the fence. You're on the fence about it because you don't really know that they're there. You have a feeling, you know, you have different little incidents. This is like, it's like almost like aliens. You know, now we got some footage, but if somebody, if you saw an alien like right in your face, you'd be like, all right, there's the evidence right there. Or if you saw like a UFO You'll be like, oh, all right, like with your own eyes and it was good footage, 4K. And it didn't look, you know, just hard evidence. But most of the time we don't have any hard evidence, especially like with our guardian angels. It's like it's it's grainy, you know, like, you know, you get intuition and your nudges and. Different situations like that, but it's not hard evidence. But God, God gave me like some hard evidence like, hey, I don't have time to like let you kind of stumble upon and figure out if guardian angels are real and having you kind of wonder and kind of, you know, do your own research. He's like, nah, we don't really have time for that right now. You need to get to know these. You got to get to know your spiritual team because you're going to need them to deal with this narcissist because you can't win this on your own. And that's the truth. There's, there, was, there was no way I could have won this battle without my guardian angels because it's like a hundred narcissists plus it's team, you know, that it recruits like a hundred on one. But the thing is, it's like it's a hundred and one on the physical, on the 3D, like, you know, on earth. But with me, the one, but in the spiritual, I have my hundred or probably a thousand. No telling how many guardian angels we all have. So it was me, just me, on the physical. But in the background, there was my team. And it was strange. Like, I'll talk about it in probably, like, later episodes at some point. But, yeah, God just showed me he was real. This is, like, during the spiritual awakening point. When you have a spiritual awakening, that's when the veil gets lifted. You start seeing this place for what it really is. And it was an intense 
spiritual awakening. It wasn't, I mean, it's, it's gradual, but it seemed pretty fast because I had to get to know my spiritual team pretty quick. So God was like doing some serious, like magical things in my life to where I was like, this, this can't be real. This can't be real. Then after, you know, something magical would happen, something just off the wall crazy would happen. Crazy in a good way, just like almost like Harry Potter style, like something that you would see in a, like a fiction movie, you know. And then I'd be like, all right, that's not real. I'm just that that's not it. Then he would do something else just as crazy. I'm like pretty much just showing me like, hey. This world that you've been that you've been thinking you're in is not really what it is. And and once I like I just said, okay, it's either I'm going crazy or this is really, really what it is. This new style, this it was illusion the other way, but this this way I see it now is the real way. So I just went all in on the real way. I'm like, all right. Then after he realizes that I'm in and it's like, okay, let's go to the next level. Now here's your spiritual team. And the spiritual team, your spiritual team, they just have you in the right place at the right time. Like I was, when you're dealing with a narcissist and I've, I have a whole series that's you know I don't know which season it's in on but it's on this pot you know on the echoes of enlightenment it's on there you just got to look back about the narcissist and there's even episodes I haven't even just released yet just cause it's just not even the time to do that yet but uh, the narcissist is just like I said it's like a uh, entity it's not it's like I don't know if it's been around for like thousands of years but it, it attaches to somebody a narcissist is this is the craziest experience now imagine a narcissist manipulating ton, a whole community of people to set you up for failure how can one person outsmart a community of independent thinkers, you know, like everybody has their kind of own strategy, but the same plan. So I listened to my uh, spiritual team and my guardian angels, any little, that's how I got so in touch with my intuition, any little something that I felt I went with, even if I didn't need the, I didn't question it. I didn't need to ask any questions. And sometimes I would do like, all right, I won't go in this door. I'll go in this other door. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but this is what I do. Then I just go in that door and I'll look back at the other door when I'm walking in. Just, I wonder why I didn't go through that door. There would be somebody waiting for me right there. It it was insane. And after tons and tons of the, those type of situations just out always my your guardian angels you got to think about it if they're spirits they're able to be anywhere it's almost like being a they're, they're almost like a fly on the wall they can be in any place at any time they can listen to the plan so while people are making plans, they're in the room, but you can't see them. And these are my guardian angels that are protecting me. Like I said, everybody else has, we all have our guardian angels, but it's just how in touch are you with them? But I had to be in my situation to make it through. That's why I know about mine so much and y'all can get to know y'all's too. 
But yeah, I was always like 10 steps ahead. Always. And I'm like, and I was maneuvering, not knowing why I'm maneuvering. And then finding out that I just dodged something. I'm like, oh. And after a couple of those, or a few of those, I was like, oh, I'm just I'm not even going to listen to my own self. I just let my intuition guard me or guide me and guard me. And over time, it just became part of my natural operating, the, way, the natural way I operated. It's just listening to my intuition. So that's pretty much kind of how I move. That's that's it became a habit. It's just like I don't even. It seems so normal now before it was like I was moving without knowing why I moved. Not actual places, but. You know, like made decisions why I didn't didn't really know why I was making those decisions. But realizing I was making the the perfect, it's just I was 10 steps ahead because my spiritual team was listening to, you know, the plans and then bringing them back to me. They couldn't just, they just can't talk to you, but you can get it through your intuition or through synchronicities. And once you realize synchronicities aren't coincidences then you can start taking those nudges from the universe as green lights to go or to stop and it doesn't have to be an actual green light like a you know in a traffic light there's different like synchronicities I mean that's why I did the episode called the, the universe has a language And once you realize what the language is, then you realize that you're guided. You're guided. It's one big it's one big synchronicity. And you have a roadmap if you follow your intuition, which is a way your guardian angels are talking to you. And they also talk to you through synchronicities and there's more ways but that's just you know just a quick way to explain but you can but overall you can feel the presence of your spiritual team with you more than a visual because you'll probably just kind of make up a visual of what you think they look like but that's not as important as the actions that they make happen in the physical. But I'm in this right here. Until next time.